Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. So today, this article just came out, the housing market is, is stuck until at least 2026, Bank of America warrants. It's a New York article from CNN. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> but, so, the market's not that doing that great. No. It's, it, it's, it's not. You know, everybody, I talked to a lot of realtors. I mentioned this on other things. I talked to mortgage people, title people, yep. realtors, home inspectors. I even talked to an appraiser, and they're all giving me the same scoop. You know, there's buyers, but they're afraid to pull the trigger. Right. There's so much turmoil right now with everything. Everybody's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's just hold on a second here. And it could be because election year. Could be a lot of different things. You know, but... The government, they wanted to slow down the market by raising rates. And they did. They did a good job. Everybody was holding on. I mean, just, just like there's no data to back this up. But I mean, if you think about it, everybody was holding on to what the Fed said last year coming into this year. Oh, there's going to be four rate drops. So everybody just kind of assumed. Yeah, I never thought there were like, going to be any. That, and they assumed that was going to be like some major rate drops. N I just didn't see it. We've said that. Now they're talking about, oh, there's going to be a rate drop in September, I think they're saying. You really think that it's not going to look political if they drop the rates in September right before an election? I think they just want people to feel better. But at the end of the day, I don't really see. And when people say they're going to drop a rate, we're, everybody's kind of hoping that we're going to go from like this 7% interest rate down to like 4%. Well, Canada, Canada dropped their rate yeah. yesterday, a right. quarter percent, you know. Yeah. But I just think. Because inflation is still in the threes. Right. Okay. And their goal was lower than that. And I just think that if they start cutting rates now, they're going, they're admitting we're in trouble. Okay. All these jobs are government jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> it, it really is, you know, or the jobs. It's because people are getting two and three jobs. People are getting two or three jobs or people are quitting the job market. They're just not looking anymore. Right. You know, and I just think that if they cut it, they're admitting it. But it, say they do start cutting rates. Inflation is going to go up from 3%. I bet you it goes up back to 7 8%. Yeah. And don't forget, the 3%, 3.5% inflation rate is about the average of some stuff. But if you look at just food or you just look at energy or just look at rent or mortgages or houses, it's up double digits. Yeah. And oh, it all yeah. depends on where you live. Like Florida, where we are, it's a higher inflation state than most other right. states. Mm -hmm. We have more inflation here because of cost of everything. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it is, it's, it's getting a little crazy, and I kind of agree with, I didn't read the article, okay? Well, this is the first time we're going to read it, but I, I agree with the, the title. The housing market is stuck until at least 2026, and Bank of America warns. So let's read it, let's see what it says, because I'll, I have my two cents, but I'll wait to see what's in there. But in the meantime, if you guys could consider subscribing, it's greatly appreciated, and share the video, and give it a thumbs up, and I thank you. Go for it, Bill. All right. Help may not be on the way for first-time home buyers frustrated by high mortgage rates and even higher home prices. And I don't think it's just first-time home buyers, I think it's home buyers in general. Great. I don't, I don't like that just segmenting to first time. I think it's home buyers in general. Yeah. Economists at Bank of America warned this week that the U.S. housing market is stuck and we are not convinced it will become unstuck until 2026. Yeah, and I think that I don't care who gets elected. I really don't. It, whether it's Trump or Biden, I think they're going to try to keep everything propped up until the election, but then they're going to let it out because, don't forget, 2025, who's ever, who's ever president, if it's Trump and everything collapses, you say, well, I'm trying to fix the mess that Biden made. Right. And if it collapses, say Biden wins, and then what he's going to say is, okay, blame me, but you'll forget about it in two years. You know what I mean? Yeah. It'll be old news. I'm already, and I'm not going for re-election. Re <laughs> so it doesn't matter. So continue. Right. So the bank said home prices will stay high and go even higher. The housing shortage will persist and mortgage rates may not fall much, even if the Federal Reserve finally delivers long delayed interest rate cuts. This will take many years of work to, uh, to work itself out. There isn't a magic fix. Michael Gapin, head of US economics at Bank of America told CNN in a phone interview. 
quote, the message for first time home buyers is one of patience and frustration. So think about it, okay? The crack started happening the last uh, big collapse, 2006, yep. 2007, yep. 2008, things got really, really bad. Mm -hmm. 2009, things were still bad. I bought my house in 2011 and I still bought it at, at, at the bottom. Right. We, so, I think we've become a, a country of just instant gratification and we think things are just going to, like, we wake up one morning and everything's magically healed. And that mm -hmm. this, like, the fix from the, the great economic crisis took almost a decade to fix. Right. And that's what I'm just saying yeah. is right now, if, if we have another collapse, it's not going to be like, okay, next month things will be better. It's, right. it's not going to be like that. Right. And the people in the industry, we just did a video on, you know, what's going to happen with realtors, inspectors. They're, still, they're going to be suffering for a while. And it, everything's in a cycle. We have a collapse, it goes back up. We have a collapse, it goes back, back up. up. Yep. But the one thing I could say, and because I looked at the research, um, and it, even though we had collapse up, collapse up, the, the consensus is, at the end of the day, the price of the home still kept going up. Yes. We've been saying this for over a year, two years now, mm -hmm. prices still continue to climb. Yes, did they crash down? Yep, but they st prices still continue to climb after um, the the reset. So, so yeah. So look what it says next. This will take many years to work itself out. Yep, <laughs> we just said we it. We just said that. <laughs> there isn't a magic fix. <laughs> yep. Housing affordability is a major problem in America. No kidding. Mm -hmm. Home prices spiked during COVID. Uh, understatement. And the, four, the Fed's war on inflation said mortgage rates surging. It did. So basically what happened with COVID, okay? People wanted to leave restricted states. Let's be realistic about it. If you were in New York and you felt locked down, because I have family there so I could talk about it, a lot of them moved to Florida. Right. We, were, we were freer. Well, remote work. Remote work because everybody went remote, right? Mm -hmm. And it was pretty much free money. When you go down into the 2% interest rates to borrow money, yeah. and, and even some people got some crazy low stuff that was in the 1%, that's basically opens the door for a lot of people to purchase houses. Right, because and, and people went borrowing. crazy. Oh yeah. Like, I'm telling you, they were waiving inspections. Oh, I know. They were, they're like, Bidding, like I know one house that I went to, I did the inspection, this person didn't do it, but he offered 125000 over asking. I had one deal, nobody believes me, but I still have the contracts. I got like 40 offers on one house. Somebody wanted to sell, It was remember the one I sold that was, uh, I mean it needed, it was an investor special, don't yeah, get yeah. me wrong. All right, I know what you're yeah, 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 it was an investor special, don't get me wrong, but like the line was out the door. It was insane. Just. It was crazy. Right. So the one-two punch has made, made it historically unaffordable to buy a home. Yeah, right now it is. You know, inflation, you know, interest rates and everything. It's been a weird combination of mortgage rates substantially going up yep. and the price of home going up too. And don't forget, during that too, is people, you know, want to save, but prices were going fast, up so fast, they couldn't save fast enough to keep up with the price increases. Right, yeah, wages didn't increase with the home appreciation because it was, you know, it was an artificial increase, for lack of a better word, and that's, you know, then we dubbed it the unicorn years. This next sentence I don't agree with. The supply of homes simply cannot keep up with the demand. Prices have been, had nowhere to go but up. Maybe back then, but not now. The home supply cannot keep up with demand. <sighs> Maybe what, it was, uh, in the past is true. I don't, I don't yeah. think that's true right now because, you know, when I look at Zillow in certain areas. I okay, mean, so let's talk about this for a second. Go for it. Inventory. What the problem is, and maybe what they're saying here is just people, everybody's kind of on pause right now, right? Like everybody's just kind of, oh, whoa, whoa, let's just hang out for a second. So homes are sitting on the market a little bit longer and now they're starting to, in some areas, exceed what a normal transaction cycle would take. But if interest rates come down and then the market opens back up on, you know, the interest side, and then all the buyers start coming back to the market, it's not gonna be this flood of buyers that were not able to buy before, but it's gonna open the door again because interest rates will nominalize, nominali whatever, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Interest rates will come down. That's gonna allow more buyers onto the market where they're just sitting back because 7%, eh, you know. 
we still haven't, we don't have enough inventory to keep up with that. Our inventory is getting eaten up really fast when that happens. Because there's, mm. when you look at it from a census standpoint, the amount of people that can buy a house to the amount of homes that are available, it's off balance by a lot. So that's why the building, we still need to continue building, but we're in this weird cycle right now, which is kind of what this well, article is talking well, about. Well, yeah, I mean, there's more and more, the houses, I know houses that have been on, for sale for four or five months. Yep. So they're on sale, they're on sale, you know, for sale for months now, you know, before yeah. they would have lasted five days. Exactly. Normal is more about like that 30 days before you get contract. That's more normal. Okay. That's what we should see. All right. The median price of previously owned U.S. homes climbed in May for the 11th month in a row to a record 419,300, up 6% from a year earlier. So the price from a year ago, mm -hmm. the prices are up 6% according to this article. Bank of America expects home prices will climb by 4.5% this year and then another 5% in 2025 per before eventually dipping by 0.5 and 26. I don't believe that. Okay, so here's something I want to point out with what they said in this, just so people understand. So this is where that, the devil's in the details here. The median price of a home. Oh, okay, so explain the median price. The median price, it didn't say home values, it says the median price of a home went up. All right. But a lot of people don't know what being right, price right. is, the so average like, price. It's a great article, 6%. And then you go, wait a second, the median price went up. So for instance, the median means you've got a thousand homes that sold, they hit number 500. What's what, that price? What's that price? So if you have a lot of l lower end homes, the median price will slide. Yeah, and then, but you have really a lot of expensive homes that sold. The median price goes up. And don't forget, the rich are still buying these expensive homes. And that's where I was going with this because the people that can afford this are people that can afford the higher interest rate and monthly payments and the larger homes. We're not talking multi-million dollar homes here. We're talking the 600s and up. And the lock-in, according to this article, the lock-in effect could persist for eight years. One major problem hurting people is the lock-in effect. People who, are, who already own their homes and are effectively locked into their property after refinancing or getting a mortgage during the pandemic when ultra rate lows were available. Buying now at current rates will require them to pay hundreds of dollars more per month interest alone. Plus, the home prices have gone up. It's true. Yeah. That's 100% true. And I think the lock-in effect is going to last for a long more time. Yeah, it goes on to say, why would I sell if I have to? And I mean, that really makes sense. Why would you sell if you don't have to sell? Because you're going to trade a low interest rate for a high interest rate when we're talking about this, the golden handcuff thing. So and especially here in Florida, if you bought yeah. a long time ago, your, your taxes are lower too. Right. Bank of America warns that lock-in effect could persist for another six to eight years, keeping a lid on supply during, the, you know, basically what we just said before. That's because mortgage rates, people are already historically low. Dave Linger, who co-founded real estate giant Remax with his wife in 1973, said the lock-in effect means people who want to size up to a bigger home can't, and the next generation can't even get their foot in the door for a starter property. True. I agree with that one. The move-up uh, market does not exist. Linninger told CNN, starter homes have doubled in value and the owners would like to move up, but the problem is they can't take their, larger, their, their mortgage rate with them. That's a true statement. That's you can't. Very, yeah. Um, we have to muddle our way through this period for a time, he said. Linager urged first-time homebuyers to remain, pa remain patient. Don't give up the dream, he said. In theory, a flood of supply of new homes would help unstick the market. However, Bank of America expects housing starts, which is a measure of newly constructed homes, to remain flat for the coming years, and housing starts will still not receive will excuse me will not re have recovered from the the bursting of the housing bubble in the mid 2000s yeah but i think i think that really depends on the area it does so like if you go out to another area in the east of us of the tampa bay area here you know there's a lot of industry coming in we've got huge hospital complexes coming mm -hmm. in huge research centers coming in medical research cancer research things of this nature um four or five major hospitals uh, specialty hospitals so they're building a ton of and i mean when i'm talking like one neighborhood they announced was thirty-eight thousand homes right and it's already under but that just, might not be the same here as exactly. it is in utah you know right. so, so this is, this is, yeah 
Divide between the have and the have nots. The forecast for a stuck housing market cuts both ways. The spike in home prices have padded the net worth of existing homeowners and given them additional financial flexibility. But there are many Americans who are on the outside looking in. They like to buy but can't afford these prices and these mortgage rates. Mm -hmm. That's my son. You know, yeah. he, he wants a house. So he's like, hey, you know, one of the pieces of property. He's like, yeah. hey, could I have that and I'll build a house? <laughs> you know? But because he can't do it on his own right now. Right. But, you know, like we, me and you, we owned, we bought our first house when I was like 23, 24. Right. Yeah. I owned a house. Now I think the average age to own a house is like it 34. Was, it was 30 something. Yeah. It was, it, it threw me off. I was really surprised. Yeah. The longer they prevent it from buying, the more time it, they'll miss out on the wealth creation. It's a true story. Yeah. In that average age, I think, you know, after thinking about when we did that video, um, I think some of that is just the certain, the younger generation doesn't want to own a home right now. So mm -hmm. I think that's contributing to that well, too. Four out of five of them say it's a bad time to buy a house. That, that's another survey that came out that confirmed the last survey that said four out of five people said that. Right. So it's mostly young people, you know, older people, it's like, if they have the money, you know, I'm gonna buy a house. In a recent Gallup poll, just 21% of Americans said it's a good time to buy. <laughs> okay, <laughs> to buy a house, tied for the worst reading in the Gallup history. An overwhelmingly majority, 70, 76%, says it's a bad time to buy. All right, you see that statistics. We'll see. Go for it. All right. Gapin, the Bank of America economist, said if the U.S. economy achieves a soft landing that he expects, meaning that the inflation cools without triggering a recession, there's a risk that home prices will rise even more than anticipated. On the other hand, if the durability of the recovery has been overestimated and a recession is on the way, home prices could tumble and affordability would ease. But obviously, you don't want to go through a recession to have better housing affordability. And that is a ridiculously true statement. It is. And he, okay, here, here's the, my, two, they said 2026. I think things will get a little better. I think 2025 is going to be rough. I don't care who's president. I think 2026, things will get better. People still have to buy homes and people will still sell homes. Yep. Things happen, divorce, people move, jobs, whatever. Okay. But I don't think we'll see anything like the boom we had for, and I think we'll have it again, but I don't think we'll have it till two, I'm predicting now on this a video, like, like, like housing rates in the fours or fives and people buying and the economy good. I think we're gonna have to wait like another five, six years. I think 2028. We'll see, know. I mean, it's, it's, the thing is, it's just not, it's going to be, it's, as we've always said, it's always the gradual is what you want. You don't want these up high, fast ups, fast downs. Yeah, but that's what people are waiting for right now. They're no, like, hey, I'm not buying a house because I want prices to crash and I want things to this. So I'll, I'll wait 12 months. Right. you would be waiting a lot longer than 12 months, in my opinion. Oh, I agree with you. The, the, to say I'm waiting because I want the market to crash is probably you're not ready to buy a house just yet. And that's it, fine. It doesn't crash overnight. You don't go to bed on a Friday, wake up on a side and say, oh, the market crashed. Look at that. Right. right. You know, it, it, do, it doesn't happen like that. So I think that things will, I think 2000, the rest of 24 is going to be rough because it's a yep. presidential election. I agree. I think 2025 is going to be rough. I don't care who's president. Yep. I think 2026 things are going to get better, and I think 2027 will be a will be a good will be a good year. Yeah, I agree. I think it'll uh, it'll all start to taper off. 25 is going to be an interesting year for sure. Yeah, that's today's video. You have anything to add? Nope, we're good. I'll see you on the next one. Appreciate you watching. All right, thank you. Don't forget to subscribe. It's greatly appreciated, and we'll speak to you soon. Bye.